Aloha Worm Ohana. Nice to see you again. We were just visiting with our friend Betsy Dyer, looking at her worm system at home, consisting of three can of worms stacking tray systems that she's been running for years, very, very successfully. And a lot of you, after doing a hand harvest with a basic box bin, think, uh, maybe I'd like to move to another system, one that doesn't take quite so long to harvest. And it was that idea that got all these people involved with manufacturing different kinds of worm systems to allow the harvest to be a lot less burdensome. Not that it's not fun, but a box bin does take a while to harvest. And a lot of people say after one or two times, that's enough for me. And many people will choose a stacking tray system. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about it because lately I've had lots and lots of questions about the stacking tray. The instructions that come with these things are really confusing and people try and figure them out and they don't know what they're doing. And I see a lot of failure rates with these, especially if people are starting without doing a box bin to begin with, getting to know their worms and, and how they behave. Um, and they're, they're just confused about what's going on. So anyway, this particular video is going to address the stacking tray system. So you ready? Here we go. This is a very popular system. It's a product of Australia. Been on the market a long time. It's recycled plastic and it's called the can of worms. Cute, huh? So let's open up this can of worms and see what's inside. So they have a little lid with, in my opinion, not enough um, aeration, but it's enough to keep wormies alive. And three trays with puka bottoms so that worms can move easily between the trays. And the trays sit on little spines on top of each other. So there's one, two, three stacking trays. And then down below, there's a tray for drainage. It also has some aeration on the bottom, which is good. And a spigot that you can turn to drain the, drain the drainage tray. So there's legs that hold the whole thing up. When you're starting with the can of worms, this is where people get really confused because they look at the picture and it's very misleading. It shows just the way we set up our box bin, a whole lot of bedding on the bottom and then some food and worms and paper. And that's just not at all how it works. So I'm gonna show you how it works. So let's say you're starting from scratch with a quarter pound of worms and uh, you start with the first tray. So that sits right there and you're gonna fill it with bedding. Now, my favorite bedding, if I have time, is cardboard, because I get to get rid of cardboard. Yay! And I would fill it up with cardboard up to the little spines, and that would be my bedding, right? And I would have this nice fluffy bedding, offering shelter and protection. All the surfaces hold moisture, and all the little air pockets in between make this an ideal bedding for worms, shelter and protection, moisture and air all together in one. They're very happy in this stuff. And um, this would be a great, a great bedding to use. And if you don't have time to tear up cardboard, a really good alternative is pine shavings, okay? Bunny bedding. You can get it at the pet store as guinea pig bedding. You can go get it at a place like Waimanalo Feed Supply. Um, a year's supply is gonna cost you about 14 bucks. And it's, it's really nice stuff. Again, cellulose material. This stuff all comes from trees. And um, it has multitudinous surface areas to hold moisture and lots of little air pockets between the bits. So either of these make a really good bedding for any system. A can of worms often comes with a little brick of coconut coir, C-O-I-R, pronounced coir, like noir. And um, that is also an excellent bedding. It's a, it's a shredded coconut husk. Again, same thing, a cellulose material comes from the tree and um, works just great. So coconut coir, cardboard, pine shavings, doesn't really matter which. Those are all really good beddings for any bin and great for a stacking tray system like the can of worms. Okay, so now you have your bedding in there, that's fine. Your bedding of your choice, just make sure it's nice and thick. It's a, you know, a good inch or two there and that'll be sufficient for uh, your starter colony of worms, whether it's a full pound or a quarter pound, whatever. You'll make sure you water this in really well so it's really, really moist. 
and you'll place your worms on and you'll throw some food in there. And I like to feed on one side and then the other, but a lot of people just feed whatever, throw stuff in. Doesn't really matter. You just find the method that works for you. And here's the thing. You feed, you put your worms in, you feed and you cover it with fluffy paper and you put the lid on. You're gonna be in this single tray, in one tray, for up to three months. So these other two trays that came with your system that you're just dying to use, to build it up, to look like a can of worms, forget about it. You're gonna put these in storage, you're gonna put them aside, you're not gonna use them for a while. Because the way the stacking tray system works is that you build it up over time so the worms finish eating through the bedding and the food you're giving them and making about an inch of vermicast before you move to the next tray. So forget about the picture that came on the packaging. That's not how it works. You're gonna do this just as though it were a box bin. One single tray with bedding, worms, food, and paper. And you are going to take care of those worms in the same way you would a box bin where you feed them and you know, usually weekly and uh, add paper and water daily. And you'll keep them in this one short little squirt of a can of worms for I would say three months, okay? Until they've processed most of that material. So give them a chance to work through everything in a single tray, the bottom tray, before you move up. Now in the meantime, you're watering these worms every day, I hope and there's a little spigot here to allow it to drain. Some people leave it open and just allow it to drain into um, a, a bowl or a cup or something. And that liquid which drains through the bed is called leachate. It's moisture that percolates down through the worm bed and soluble nutrients from vermicast will leach into it. It's not worm tea. That is something very different. This is called leachate. And in the beginning, there's not much vermicast in here. So the leachate is very, very dilute. But you know, if you want to water plants with it, it's fine. And as the worm system builds up and there's a thicker layer of finished material, that leachate is higher in quality. And a lot of people like to use it. The way I like, and I want to point out that the worms not only will be enjoying crawling around in this first tray, but they will also be crawling around down here in the drainage tray because they love to be in puddles. So do not panic. Worms like to go for a swim and they like it. It's nice and airy and cool down there. And there's plenty of moisture, little puddles, and there will be plenty of worms in your drainage tray. So when you drain, I like to water my worms, give it some time to all drain out with the spigot closed. So I let the, I let the water accumulate in that drainage tray. Then I let all the worms out I let all the water out and the worms come flushed out with the water. So it's really easy for me to rescue them. I'll pour off the leachate. The worms are always gonna sink to the bottom. So if you pour slowly, they'll be at the very, very bottom. I'll rescue them, put them back and then lose, use the leachate on my potted plants or my garden and put the, worms, put the worms back. To me, that's the easiest way to do it. You just flush that hole that, uh, that whole drainage tray all at once. And that way you're kind of flushing out any sludge or anything that's in there as well and keeping it nice and clear. So you can either let it drip, but my recommendation is that you water your worms with it closed, let it fill, and then zoom, drain everybody out, clears it out, get out, gets out any worms that are hanging around in the bottom, rescue them, use the leachate, then um, leave it open to drip while there's not much. So that's just my way of doing it. It doesn't really matter, but I found that that works the best for me. So after three months, your worms have worked through this bedding. They've worked through the food, they've worked through the paper, and you can see that there's um, uh, vermicast in there, as, as well as little bits and pieces of things that take a little longer to break down. They don't have to break everything down, but you can see that they've worked through the material. And at that point, and usually it's two, three months at least, 
longer if you have a small colony to start. If you have a bigger colony, they'll work through it faster, obviously. But let them work the first tray really good before you put the second tray on. So you stick the second tray on and you'll put your bedding in there again, filling it up, up to the little spines. And feed, paper. Guess what? The worms are kind of come right up through these pukas to find the fresh food and to get into fresh bedding because they, even though they like to hang out in, uh, in the vermicast, they really prefer to be the fresh, in fresh bedding to be feeding and they'll come up and they'll feed. Two to three months, let them work through this material. It may happen faster because now you have more worms, but let's say two months. Let's say minimum two months in the second tray. Meanwhile, your third tray is still in storage somewhere. Don't get ahead of it, let them work it. You'll have the top on, it'll look just like not quite so short a can of worms, but not quite the full thing for another couple of months. At the end of that couple of months, they will have worked through most of that material. Put on the third tray. Hooray, you feel like you finally arrived. Fill it with fresh bedding, feed, paper cover on top. The worms will come up. Now, the stuff on the bottom has been there the longest. The worms, even though they're surface feeders and they're feeding on top, are also working the whole system. And if you had a box bin before, you know that the worms are down on the bottom and they're up on the top. They're working through the whole bed and they're doing the same thing in the can of worms. So even though it's more finished material, they're gonna be in it, continuing to work it. Uh, halfway finished material, same thing. Freshly, most of them will be here, but they're gonna be throughout the whole system. Okay, so don't worry, the worms are gonna be working throughout the whole thing. But in another two to three months, let's say two months, this is ready and you ran out of trays. Oh no, do I order new trays? No, no, no. What you do is you harvest the bottom tray because it's been there the longest and this is gonna be your finished vermicast. And yes, it will have worms in it because they're hanging out down there. They're hanging out in the drainage. They're hanging out throughout the whole bin. So not to worry, just because there's worms in there doesn't mean you can't, after six to eight months, harvest your original tray that you started a while back. It will have the most finished vermicast and it will um, allow you to get some nice vermicast out of there and to start a new tray because you ran out of trays. They only gave you three. You don't need more. So here's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna remove the top two trays. You're gonna take out that original tray, which you'll have to pretend with me now, is now pretty much vermicast with a bunch of worms still in it. And it's real wet and gooey down there. Okay, fine. You take the two trays that you removed, set them back on. So now they've moved down a slot. You take this tray, filled with vermicast and you fluff it up. Take your fingers and fluff it up and you're gonna see lots of squirmy wormies in there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave the lid off and let it sit out there in the air, in the light for maybe as long as a week, maybe a couple days, whatever it takes. But that will take that, that the, the light and the and the dryness will drive the worms down. They'll go, oh, I don't want to be here anymore. It's finished vermicast anyway, and it's getting dry, and I don't want to deal with this light. So they'll go right down through the pukas on the bottom to the tray below. And in a few days to a week, you're going to have some worm-free vermicast on top. Whoa. You scoop it out. That's your vermicast harvest and you fill it with fresh bedding, you start again. A couple months later, the bottom tray is ready because now it's been in there maybe six months, eight months. So you do the same thing. Remove the two top trays, take the bottom tray, put it on top, fluff it up, let the air and the dryness drive the worms down over a period of a few days to even as long as a week harvest. And there you go. You now have your system going. Every two to three months, you'll take out that bottom tray, set it on top, let the worms go down, remove the vermicast, rebed. Two or three months later, 
so forth. So now you're rotating that bottom tray to the top to do the harvest and rebedding, and you're doing this forever. So now the rotation has begun, but remember it's taken several months to get your full can of worms ready for the first harvest. So please give it plenty of time and don't worry that there's still worms in the bottom tray. That's what scares people. They say, oh no, the worms haven't moved up. They're still here in the bottom tray. I can't harvest yet. So they let their can sit for years and sooner or later that colony is going to diminish because it's not a healthy situation. You want to get the finished vermicast out of there because worms want to be in fresh bedding. So that's how the second tray system works. You build it up over time. I would say at least two months, some people like three, two months, four months, six months, you've got, it's gonna be six months before you finish your first, you get it to the capacity and you'll be doing your first harvest at that time. Okay, everybody got that? Okay, very good. Enjoy your second tray system. It works great because you're only taking a small amount of vermicast out at a time and you don't have to separate the bits and pieces of, of whatever. And uh, it's worm free because you've let the worms go down to the bottom tray. Now people do this differently, but this has been the method that works best for me. So I tell that to you and you just figure out what works for you. But the key is build it up over time and then get into a steady rotation. Try and do it real regularly. Every two to three months, the bottom tray goes on top for the vermicast harvest and rebid. That's it. Enjoy.